Now that we can represent voltages, currents, and impedances with phasors, we can start doing circuit analysis for AC circuits. The tools we have are voltage nodes, current loops, and thevenins. Everything that worked at DC also works at AC, except that now we're using complex numbers. As a reminder, if you have complex numbers, the impedance is R for resistor, J omega L for inductor, 1 over J omega C for capacitor, and the voltage goes to A minus J B, where the real part represents cosine, minus J represents sine. If I have a circuit, I can analyze it just like we did at DC, except now the sum of the currents have to add to zero, where the currents are now complex numbers. For example, suppose I have the following circuit, a 100 volt, 10, 100 hertz sine wave, going to 400 ohms, 10 microfarads. The first step is to convert to phasors. That's shown in red. The frequency is 628 ratings per second. I set 100 hertz. The natural frequency, omega, is 2 pi f. So that will be 628 ratings per second. The input is 0 minus j10. Real is cosine minus j is sine. Actually, 0 minus j100. Just a 0 there. R doesn't change. Capacitor becomes 1 over j omega c. This becomes minus j159 ohms. I now write my, write my voltage node equation. The V0 is 0 minus J100. At node 1, the current left plus the current down equals 0. And going back, at node 1, the current left, V1 minus V0 over 400, plus the current down, V1 minus 0 over minus J159. That has to equal 0. I can now solve. A little bit of algebra gives you that V1 is 34 minus J13. What that means is the real is cosine minus j is sine. That means that v1 of t in the time domain is 34 cosine 628t plus 13 sine 628t. In CircuitLab, I can verify this. Using CircuitLab, you can drag and drop your components. I'll input a voltage source, resistor, capacitor, connect them all together, make the input a 100 volt sine wave, at 100 hertz, you need 628 ratings per second, and label these guys as V0, V1. If I now go to run and do a time domain simulation, 100 hertz has a period of 10 milliseconds. Let's simulate it for three cycles, or 30 milliseconds. Make the time step, um, I would say 30 microseconds, that gives you 1,000 points. This gives you 3,000 points in the plot. Slide overkill. And I want to look at V0 and V1. Now when you run it, that's what the waveform looks like. Here's the input, 100 volt sine wave. Here's the output. Uh, the first part is the transient. You usually look at a couple cycles later to see steady state. The amplitude you can see and the time delay. From the amplitude, the peak is 37.8 volts. The time delay is 4.39 milliseconds. So like right here, this is the zero crossing. That's t equals zero for the sine wave. Here's the peak. Cosine is a peak. That time delay is 4.7 milliseconds. The period is this time, 10 milliseconds. The phase shift then is 4.39 milliseconds over the period times 360. The output y is 37.87 volts at minus 158 degrees. That matches our calculations. Take the rectangular form, convert to polar, and you have basically the same answer. Uh, note that in lab, you normally get polar form. For calculations, I prefer rectangular form. Their equivalent is whatever your preference is. I prefer rectangular for calculations. Lab is easier to see polar. That tells you the amplitude and delay. A second example. Suppose I have a two-stage circuit. I want to analyze it by writing voltage nodes. Same thing we did before. First, I'm going to want to write three equations, three unknowns, but those equations will have complex numbers in them. To get the complex numbers, convert to phasor form. Here the input goes to phasor form. That's 100 plus J0. 100 cosine, 0 sine. Resistors don't change. Capacitor goes to 1 over J omega C. Omega is 2. So 1 over J times 0.01 times 2 is minus J50. 1 over J omega C is 25. 1 over j omega c is minus j16. 
Now write the voltage nodes at node 1, current left, down, down, right equals 0. Node 2, current sum to 0. Node 3, current sum to 0. When I write the node equations, for example, at node 1, I'll have V1 minus X over 100, plus V1 at minus 0 over 150, plus V1 minus 0 over minus 350, plus V1 minus V2 over 200 equals 0. I get my three equations, three unknowns. Now solve. Same as we did before, except now I've got complex numbers. When I solve, I group terms, put it in matrix form, and it looks just like we had before, except now the numbers are complex. If you solve in MATLAB, you get complex numbers. This is where you really need MATLAB. MATLAB lets you solve three equations, three unknowns. It doesn't care if the numbers are real or complex. It handles it just fine. What these numbers mean is the real part is cosine, minus j is sine, and the frequency stays the same. The input was at 2 ratings per second, all the outputs are 2 ratings per second. And I can express it in rectangular form or polar form. Your pick. If I simulate in Circuit Lab, can you build a circuit, label the nodes, the input is a sine wave at 0.318 Hz, again the input is at 2 ratings per second, omega is 2 pi f. So the frequency is radians divided by 2 pi, 0.318 Hz. Now run a time domain sim simulation, and you get this. Here's your input, a 100 volt sine wave. Here's your V1, V2, V3. Note that the amplitude is dropping, just like we calculated. And there's also a phase shift. That's your delay. The phase shift is the angular part. So here the peak is here's 0 degrees, 90, 180. Uh, the first peak is right around 45 degrees. The second peak right here is past, one, past 90 degrees. That's minus 116 degrees. And the third one's really hard to see. So we can do voltage nodes with circuits just like we did at DC, only now we're using complex numbers.